you've heard me say that now a few times, the IBF heavyweight champion of the world, that's a dream, right? Fighters start out and they want to become champions. You now are that. Does it feel any different? Yeah, diff a little bit, finding out. You know, I would have loved to win it on the night in my last fight, but, you know, here we are. You know, I'm grateful, I'm blessed, and, you know, we keep going. Have you found out something about yourself with your last two performances? You had to dig really deep against Jarrell Milley. You, you, you found something. You found that second win and got the late stoppage. You had to dig really deep against Philip Hergovic and you found something there as well. Do you feel like you're finding something out about yourself after every single fight? Definitely. I'm learning more about myself, how to be, you know, as a fighter, as a person, you know, coming out of the darkness, going into the light and, you know, being the man of the future and, you know, improving all around as a fighter and an athlete. So. Yeah, yeah, really up for this, ready to go. I asked Frank about the call-outs for AJ. You've also been calling out Anthony Joshua for a while. For a long time, he was the top dog. Was that the call-out or was there anything else in it? That's just the, where I'm aiming for, to be the best, you know, to fight the best and be the best. And, you know, AJ's been the king for a long time, man. You know, we, we all know he's been the king for a very long time. And on the night, I need to become a king slayer. And that's, that's my goal and that's my... That's the mission at hand, so I'm just ready to go. You are underdog in this fight. That doesn't really mean much because you've been underdog against Gerald Miller and you're underdog against Philip Hergovic. How confident are you, Daniel, that you can get the job done September 21st? I'm ready to let my fist do the talking, you know. I'm 100% ready to go. I'm going to go to camp, focus and train like a beast. So, yeah, bring it on. As you've always done, bring it on, Daniel Dubois. Let's go to AJ, two-time former unified heavyweight champion of the world. Here we are again. Um, as you've always said to me, next man up. Yeah, correct, next man up. Uh, congratulations to Daniel for winning his last fight. I went out there to watch it live and we're here now. And before I carry on, we have to give a shout out to all the promoters on the table for bringing this uh, car together and especially His Excellency as well because you know he's brought me some unbelievable uh, opportunities to fight. And this one is near, near enough topping it bringing Riyadh season to the UK, phenomenal opportunity. But um, yeah, as I said, I went out there to watch the fight. Good fight between the two of them, Hergovic and Dubois. I picked Dubois to win as well. Yep. I watched boxing closely and I picked him before and um, it came true and we're here. So I've been having Dubois on my mind for a while and um, he'll be on my mind for the next 12 weeks until, until I get my hand raised. You say you've had him on your mind for a while. I mean, you've always been linked with Deontay Wilder and potentially a Joseph Parker rematch. Tyson Fury's name has been mentioned for the past decade. Yeah. Not much Daniel Dubois. So you've had to almost, I guess, realign your mind quite quickly, right, recently, because he's not really been thought of as your opponent. No, not like the way they mentioned like Fury or they mentioned Wilder. Not, not in that same breath, but I'm not silly either. I know the game. We're all in the wild, isn't it? We're a pack of lions, isn't it? hunters so I've got to keep my eyes peeled I can't just focus on those two and not worry about anyone else so I've always kept my eyes peeled on on Daniel and the rest of the heavyweights as well so whoever it was going to be in there on that seat I would have still been ready to fight September so yeah it just happens to be him now yeah obviously look it's a massive night for Riyadh season we are going back to Wembley Stadium you were so successful there against Vladimir Klitschko uh, against Povetkin is the carrot being dangled that extra kind of cream on top if you like the fact that you are looking to become a three-time heavyweight champion of the world um not necessarily if i'm honest with you because the goal is just getting through a successful training camp doing exactly what i need to do instructed by my team and my coach and then performing on the night and then the shiny stuff comes at a later date but for me the goal is just to kind of focus on what's in front of me and uh, that's a good training camp it's a good performance and everything else comes after Done. that. He's a young man, Daniel Dubois, only 26 years of age, right? He's been around for a long time. You're slightly older, obviously still in fantastic shape, but slightly older, Anthony. Uh, what's it like now, these new young heavyweights coming up that you've almost got to slay? Well, being an old man, basically. Being an older man. <laughs> <laughs> I feel fresh. I feel fresh as my shoulders clicking. <laughs> now nah, I feel good, I feel good. Like, now I don't drink, don't smoke. Have a little turn up now and again, but I still don't drink, don't smoke. And um, that's about it. That's my only vice, just socialising. So I feel good. Thank God I didn't get caught up in no antics outside of boxing. I use boxing as a path to keep me on the straight and narrow. I didn't use it as a path to kind of take me off it. So 
yeah, young fighters coming up, look after your bodies, look after your minds, we'll pay dividends in the long run. So for this fight here with Daniel, um, it don't matter if I was 35 and he was 15, 20, 25, it don't matter. It's just a fight and I'm in peak condition. I feel good, I feel strong. So yeah, age is just a number in this one.